Okay, so we're gonna be working on the caterpillar first. So I want you guys to go to file and open. And I want you guys to grab that caterpillar file and open it up. And I want you guys to also go to file open and I want you to grab the sprout image. So what I need you guys to do now is separate your caterpillar from your background because we're gonna add the caterpillar onto the sprout and we're gonna color match it. So we're gonna make it look like he should be part of the scene. To start, you can use whatever you want. I'm gonna use my quick selection tool. Photoshop 2020 now has this object selection tool and um, what you can do is you can choose that and we can click on subject selection and it tries to find it. For the caterpillar, it was pretty good. It missed this, which is fine. All I need to do is, I'm just gonna go to my quick selection tool and I'm gonna up my brush size by pressing my left square bracket. Um, when I press and hold my alt, I can just click in here and exclude that part. And right here, his little foot, I'm gonna bring my brush size down. So I'm tapping on my left square bracket and I'm just gonna click and I've added it. Oh, that's too much. Minus, press and hold alt, click, reshape it there a bit. And it's pretty good. He has a couple hairs here. I'm not really going to worry about those. Um, my main concerns are just here between his legs. The color is kind of close there. So I might actually bring it into my refine edge tool just to make sure I've got everything. So as long as you're on a selection tool, which would be the rectangle marquee tool, the lasso tool, or the quick selection tool, any of these three, you'll have the option up here to select and mask. So I'm gonna click on my select and mask just to refine my edges. Last time I used this, I had the overlay, the red overlay showing. You might have an onion skin or something else. Whatever you've used last will show up here. I like choosing the red, the black, or the white. You can really see what you're selecting. Okay, so I'm gonna use the red. I've upped my opacity. I find I can really see where there's a problem right here, this little triangle. I can just correct that. So I'm gonna just turn on my smart radius and I'm gonna up it a bit. I'm gonna let Photoshop kind of take a look at this and see what it decides. And you can go to an extreme just to see what you get, but you can see that it's degrading the edges now and we don't want that to happen. So we don't wanna to go too high, but it's always good to check. I'm gonna bring it down. Usually I find two or three pixels is pretty good. And then I'll smooth my edges slightly. So maybe about three pixels. Notice that this image is at 100%. So if I do something like 44 pixels, for example, it's gonna get a pretty blurry edge and it's gonna be really noticeable because it's not a large file, it means it has less pixels. So if my percentage was just at 6% or something, I could probably up the smoothing a little bit more to reflect that. So I'm gonna do something probably around maybe even three, something like that. Feather, I'm just gonna up it. I usually don't go past one for feather. The difference between smoothing and feathering, smoothing will blur your edges, whereas feathering will take the pixels from either side of your selection and kind of blend them together. In the end, you get almost the same effect. Contrast, if we wanna separate it and create a contrast with the background, you can add this. You can see that it kind of gets rid of the smoothing. You might use the contrast. I find it works best if you have something, for example, like a white on white. Maybe you're trying to separate like a white sweater from a white background. Adding the contrast creates that difference and it looks good. Um, now for your selection, if you've kind of overshot it, you can shift your edge, expand your edge a bit, which in this case I don't need to do, or you can condense your edge. I'm happy with my selection. I think the object selection tool did a pretty good job. So I'm gonna leave it at zero. Next thing I wanna do again, my issue was right there, okay? And I do have some stuff here that I can get rid of. The top one here is our quick selection tool, meaning I could just basically reselect all this stuff up here which I don't wanna do. Same thing where if you press and hold Alt, it's going to minus from your selection. So I'm not gonna do that, just Command Z that. But I do want to access my Refine Edge brush tool because I want Photoshop to take a look around here. See that? So basically you can refine your edges and this is a smart tool and you can go along your edges and Photoshop will take a look again and it will look for some contrast and it will remove or add 
based on where you're clicking. So in this case, I wanted to kind of remove the branch that was showing there that was also selected. I don't want that selected. Also, it's really hard to see what's going on here. So I'm just gonna run that up there and see if Photoshop sees something that I don't. And I think that's okay. This little part here, I'm gonna click and drag up there and look at that Photoshop got rid of that for me, which is awesome. And I think I'm good with the rest of it. Photoshop fixed those concerns of mine, so I'm good with that. You can also, again, with the Refine Edge tool, you can press and hold Alt and it will do the opposite. So you can just kind of scribble there. Nothing happened in this case, but if you want to just see what Photoshop does, you can also just click and drag all around the caterpillar just to see what Photoshop pulls out. Just remember the good old Command Z. Now we have this other option here. It's called decontaminate colors. And in this case, it doesn't make a huge difference, but what it does is it removes the amount of fringe. And fringe means that sort of white line you might get around the caterpillar. Um, in this case, it wasn't too bad. I think he did have a bit of fringe actually in this area. I'm just gonna uncheck that so you can see. So see all that kind of white line around him? So I will use it this time. I'm gonna click on decontaminate colors. So you see how it got rid of all that kind of white fringe there. You can lower it so you can kind of see the difference. By default, I think it's set to 100%. So if I were to bring it down to three or 50, you can kind of see the difference. Okay, and when you click and hold that slider, you can see the before and after. Last thing we want to do is make sure that we output to a new layer with layer mask. So we're retaining our selection, we're creating a mask, and we're creating a new layer. So we can do whatever we want with this. This choice gives us the most options. I always choose this choice. Okay, so let's select that one. You can choose to remember the settings if you want. If you are going to be doing, maybe say you had a whole bug collection that you wanted to do and you wanted all the same settings, you could remember the settings if you want. I'm going to click OK. And there we go. So my caterpillar is on his own layer. He is masked and it's hidden the background layer. If I wanna bring back some of his background, I can. I have that choice. In this case, I'm gonna be bringing the caterpillar over to the sprout. I want to make the caterpillar look like he is sitting on the sprout and I wanna make him look like he's part of this image. I'm gonna take my caterpillar. What I'm gonna do is command click on that mask and that selects just the caterpillar. Notice that I have this white frame that appears here. That means I've clicked on this one, so it's selected. And then when I command click on it, it selects. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the actual caterpillar image here, and I'm gonna choose my black arrow tool or my move tool, so that would be V on my keyboard. And I can just click and drag, and I'm holding, holding, over to my sprout, holding, holding, and release. And there's my caterpillar. So you can see I've dragged in just the caterpillar and not the mask because I know I don't need any more of the background. So now at this point, you can resize your caterpillar. You can move him around. Maybe I'm not sure where exactly you want to place them somewhere that looks kind of realistic. I'm going to press command T or control T on a PC. I think I'm going to make him a bit bigger. So I'm going to click and drag. If you're using a version before 2020, which you're probably not. You need to press shift to maintain those proportions. In this case, if I'm using 2020, so I don't need to do that. So maybe I'll make it so like Michelangelo photo, right? Where the caterpillar is reaching just for the leaf, or he could be crawling onto the leaf. You could do something like that. Okay, so let's take a look at the image as a whole. So we have to look at a few things here. The important things that you need to consider when you're compositing or bringing separate images together to make them into one are your lighting. How do you feel about the lighting in this image? The caterpillar looks pretty bright compared to the rest of the image and I'm sure both of these were taken outside in daylight which is nice so they're not too far off but it seems like the sprout has more of maybe a subtle dullness to it and the caterpillar is really bright, I think, compared to the other image. And maybe that is realistic, but in this case, maybe it's not, right? Because we wanna make them look like they're together. So we wanna take the piece that we've brought into our main image and we wanna make it match with our main image. So I wanna make the caterpillar match with the sprout. So I'm considering the lighting. I think the caterpillar is probably gonna to be too bright. We're gonna test that. Next thing is the perspective. If I were to take my caterpillar and bring him here, I mean, that's totally off. I would probably have to blur my caterpillar 
in this area because this area is very blurred because you see there's a blur in the background and there's a blur in the foreground and then our middle ground is our focal point so because our caterpillar is in focus he would be in our middle ground or she would be in the mid ground take a look at the focus of the original image and the focus of the caterpillar it's always easier to blur than it is to focus sometimes when you focus or sharpen you can over sharpen and you create noise in the image that you're sharpening if you blur it though it softens the image a bit and you usually get a better result when you're blurring lighting perspective sharpness like i was saying um, again uh, the perspective if for example this caterpillar maybe it was hmm, it's hard in this picture because it's uh i think you could almost make it work with the caterpillar no matter what but let's say for example you take a picture of an animal and you're at eye level with the animal and then you take a picture you're standing somewhere looking down at something if you're bringing the eye level picture into the other image where you're looking down it's not the same perspective and it's going to look really unrealistic so something to consider is your perspective noise also so noise falls into the same category as sharpness and blur uh, again something you need to be aware of you can tell that this caterpillar is sharper than this image here so one of the things we're probably going to do with the caterpillar is blur him or her a little bit so first thing I want to do is I want to compare the brightness so the best way to do this is to create an adjustment layer and we're gonna choose black and white so making your image black and white helps you really see the values what's light what's dark the luminosity in your image colors can be distracting when we turn our image into black and white you can see what's really light and what's dark so that's what we're looking for here so in this case you can see the caterpillar is pretty bright compared to this sprout so I want to create an adjustment layer on top of my caterpillar so I'm selecting my caterpillar layer and I'm gonna to go to my adjustment layer options and I'm going to choose I'm gonna start with levels you have a lot of options here but I'm gonna start with levels and you can see in my properties I have the ability to change this here so if I move my black point you can see that I'm darkening the entire image. Now, I do need to clip this layer to the caterpillar. So when I press and hold Alt and I hover between the layers like this, you see that I get the square with the arrow and I'm holding Alt and I'm not clicking and I'm not dragging. I'm just holding and moving my mouse and I see that. Once I see that, I just press once on my mouse and it clips it together. Meaning everything I do with my levels now will only affect the caterpillar if you click on the burger menu in your layers too, clipping mask and there's your shortcut so uh, for me I have it already done so I can release the clipping mask and this is the shortcut in this case if I didn't have it if I hadn't have pressed my alt and hovered between the two layers it would say create clipping mask let's see we'll just double check here yeah create clipping mask so there's kind of three ways to get to this point where you're adding the effects only to the layer underneath it or you're clipping it so um, you can use the shortcut you can choose the burger menu I prefer to press and hold alt hover between the layers and click and that just connects it to that layer underneath so the caterpillars on his own layer that's why it's only affecting him if the caterpillar had a whole bunch of other stuff going on it would affect everything else within this layer I need to darken the caterpillar a bit so I'm gonna click and drag this black point and I'm gonna take my gray point and you can see if I move it to the left it's brightening him way too much so I'm gonna move it to the right a bit and that looks maybe more around where it should be I'm always worried about taking it a little bit too far so I take it to where I think it should be and then I pull back a bit so I'm gonna actually lighten that black point slightly I'm gonna leave it right about there I think that looks good so now to check this theory we're gonna turn off our black and white layer so we can see the difference and then I'm gonna hide my levels so this is the before and this is after so you can see that actually our caterpillar was too bright now what's the next problem when you look at this you may notice that the caterpillar looks really saturated so I want to create a hue and saturation layer so I'm going to go back to my adjustment layers here so now for the saturation I can really saturate them which looks of course terrible or I can completely 
desaturate them. So again, in this case, he's oversaturated. So I'm going to bring down that saturation level. And you can see that he's starting to look kind of more in the same range or color range as these leaves here. You can play with the lightness and darkness. I usually don't like to touch the lightness and darkness here. I like to use levels and I like to use curves. Again, slightly desaturate. If you find he's pretty green, you could even slightly change the hue. You could add a bit more yellow. And I find in this case it, it works because we have the yellow leaf here. And I'm trying to match the caterpillar um, to something around this zone. Maybe I've desaturated him a bit too much. I might add a bit more color. So this is something you can play with. If I up it, I'm adding more blue. He doesn't quite fit in. And then if I go to the left, I'm adding more yellow. And then he kind of matches this leaf here, which I don't want. I mean, he should be green, right? So, um, but I, I do want to add just a slight bit of yellow just to sort of tone down that green because it is such a bright green. Now, again, in reality, he probably would be a bright green. You would see the difference, but because we're compositing this image and we want to make it look real, we just want to match him just a little bit more, just so it seems more realistic, right? Because we're, we're faking it. So now the next thing we have to think about is our sharpness and our perspective. So I'm going to click on my caterpillar again. I'm actually going to press my command T because I had him up here before and he was reaching for the leaf. And so maybe I will shrink him down a bit just so I can make him like he's diving for the leaf. He's going to make it. And press enter whenever you're happy with the positioning. Again, I do want him on this mid ground of focus here. But when I look at the midground of focus, I see that this, this sprout looks less focused than my caterpillar. So that would mean that my caterpillar might be closer to the camera. So it, it looks still kind of fake, right? So we do need to add a blur to the caterpillar. I want to protect the actual image of the caterpillar. So what I'm going to do is create a smart object. So all I need to do is right click on the layer, just choose convert to smart object. And what this does is basically it creates a protective bubble around the caterpillar. So if I make any changes, if I rotate him, if I make him bigger or smaller, just like I've been doing, I probably should have done this first, but <laughs> I didn't. Every time you make a movement with your image, you're slightly degrading it. If you make it into a smart object right off the bat, you'll keep the original image quality. I've made him into a smart object and I want to add a blur. Now, if I, add a blur to this layer, the cool thing about it is it becomes an effect. So it becomes like a sub layer. So I can always go back and change the blur. If I hadn't have made him into a smart object and I created a blur and then I did 10 things later, like I couldn't go back. So I'm kind of, it's called destructive editing where when you can't go back and correct anything or change anything. So we want to work non-destructively. So we always want to have an out basically. We want to always be able to go back. So I've made them into a smart object. Again, right click on the layer and create smart object. So now I'm going to go into filter and I'm going to choose blur and I'm going to choose Gaussian blur. And we get a preview here. We also can see the preview happening right on screen. And I prefer to look on screen because I want to compare it to what I have on my screen. I don't just want to see my caterpillar and guess. You can zoom out and you do get a preview here. If we can find him, there he is, he's over there. So it's taking everything on that layer itself and it's blurring it. The nice thing is when you click and hold within this window, it brings you back to the original non-blurred image. Okay, so obviously this is too much, so I'm gonna take it down. And again, just trying to compare to the leaf itself. I, it would be nice if he was kind of more in focus than the leaf, but again, I want him to be on the same plane as the leaf, so I do need to blur him a bit. So something like that could work in comparison again to this leaf here. Now this leaf is probably pointing a little bit more towards us. So it's probably, it's, it is a little bit less in focus than this one right here. So I want to match the blur from my caterpillar to this leaf, which seems to be the main focal point here. So maybe somewhere around two. Again, uh, this is not set in stone. You can always change it. If you have your caterpillar over here or down here or something else, you'll probably have a different blur level than I will have. So I'm going to do about 1.9 and I'm going to click OK. Now when I click OK, if you look at your layers, you'll see that now you have smart filters and I have the Gaussian blur. So now I can turn it off and on. So this is how we merge our image into another one and make it look realistic.